Okay guys, this is a rare product heads up video from me. Um, but when I found out the price of these things, I almost fainted. So <laughs> I'm just giving you a heads up on this. Universal Audio have released a new line of USB audio interfaces called the Vault series. And when I saw the press release, I thought, well, the basic unit is going to be about 350 quid, 400 quid, something like that. When I found out that the basic unit is only 120 British pounds, including tax, I almost fainted. So hence, I'm giving you a heads up here. Um, there are five units in the Vault series, but we're focusing on the two core units, the Vault 1 with a single mic line input and the Vault 2 with two mic line inputs. And um, the key to these Vault series USB audio interfaces is this vintage switch. We'll talk more about this um, in a minute, but basically when you switch in this vintage switch, it switches in a DSP powered emulation of one of the most famous vintage preamps in the world. Okay. Now, the Bolt 1, 120 British pounds. I'm using Tom Man for the prices because they are once again including VAT for British prices, hello you. But also, they're a good indicator of a typical street price, but obviously there's loads of shops out there, so shop around. But the Bolt 1, single mic line input, 120 pounds. The Bolt 2, dual mic line input, 163 pounds. Now each unit for each physical input has a gain control, the vintage button, um, an instrument button, and if you activate that, then if you feed a guitar or bass in, it switches the input to high Z so you can feed your guitars and basses direct into your amp modeling software. Um, both units also feature a 48 volt phantom power switch, uh, but in the case of the dual unit, that 48 volts is applied to both inputs or not. You can't switch phantom power for either input, it, it applies it to both. And also both units feature a direct monitoring button if you want to use direct monitoring. Uh, both units also feature a headphone socket with dedicated volume control and a dedicated volume control for the monitors, the main left right monitor out on the back, which is essential for any USB interface. If you don't have separate volume controls for headphones and monitors, then it's next to useless. Uh, take, a, take a hint there, Focus right, because you're still doing the Scarlet Solo with a combined volume control for both headphones and monitor out which is completely useless. Now there's more surprises around the back actually uh, because both units feature real MIDI in out which on a tiny little USB interface like this is quite unusual. So um, you get your main left right monitor out, there's your MIDI in out, USB-C power connector on off switch yeah, and it's the same on the dual unit. Monitor outs, MIDI, USB-C, power and switch. And incidentally, either of these will work with an iPad or an iPhone, etc. Now, let's talk about this vintage switch. When you plug um, a mic or whatever in your line input into, into either the one or the two inputs on this device and activate the vintage switch, which is switchable per channel on the dual unit, it brings in an emulation which is running off DSP inside the unit. It brings in an emulation of one of the most famous preamps ever made, um, the Universal Audio 610. Now let's just have a look at that uh, by referring to my still, <laughs> still under construction uh, new website, which hopefully I can begin to launch in the new year. Boom, here we go. Um, okay, sorry, it's not a very big picture because I haven't done the coding yet where you click on this and it opens its own page with a bigger image. But the Universal Audio 610 is actually the, the module, right? The preamp module and it has basic two band EQ. Now the modules were sold separately in whatever amounts and studios would fit them to their own custom frames. Although Universal Audio did make an actual frame to house the 610 modules, and here's an example of it, but in all the time that these were made, they only made 25 of these custom frames, um, 
one of which was given to Frank Sinatra and one of which was given to Ray Charles. Okay. Now, famously, the 610 preamp was used in Muscle Shoals Studio, which is one of the most famous studios in recording history down in Alabama in America. And so the 610 preamp was used to record the likes of Aretha Franklin, Otis Redding and Wilson Pickett. Also the Rolling Stones went down there and recorded Wild Horses and Brown Sugar there. So those were recorded through uh, 610s. And um, also the 610 pre's we used to record classic albums like Neil Young's Harvest, Beach Boys Pet Sounds and The Doors' LA Woman, as well as many others and modern, more recent artists like Adele, etc. Okay. So the 610, designed by Bill Putnam, you know, he's like sort of the American Rupert Neve, one of the daddies of modern recording. Um, you know, he designed this pre, and it's one of the most respected vintage preamps in the world. To give you some idea of the value of these preamp modules, I um, actually got these images from an auction site. Um, and these green face and black face modules were being sold by the estate of um, Neil Young. And just to give you an idea of the price, um, 11 of the green plates were sold for $56,250 and 16 of the black plate modules were sold for $68,750. <laughs> To give you some idea of the value of these things today okay one of the most respected old vintage pre's in the world and it's you know right up there with the likes of your classic Neves and APIs and all the rest of it all right so there's a little bit of, of history um, so yeah so with these units you switch in the vintage switch and it applies that emulation to the preamp but it's running off DSP inside it's not a plug-in hosted on your door now, what will that preamp emulation do for your sound? Well, all the usual superlatives that people apply to these, you know, classic vintage pre's. More weight, more body, more heft, more presence, more edge, harmonic edge, you know, subtly harmonic edge. Yeah. Um, um, Fortunately, on the Universal Audio Vault pages, they don't give any audio examples of the unit in action with the vintage switch applied. However, if you wanted to hear what it might sound like, or probably will sound like, if you go to the Universal Audio page and go to their plugins page, and then find the Universal Audio plugin pack, it includes an emulation of the 610 Pre and there they do give audio examples of the 610 pre-emulation being applied to things like vocal, acoustic guitar, etc. to give you an idea. As I said, it will give it just that more body, heft, meat, edge, weight, you know what I mean? Okay, and obviously that will increase the more you drive that preamp. Right. Alrighty, so um, just to show you, there are three other units in the Volt range but they're different let's quickly look at that um, there is the, these other volt units but they end with 76 the volt 176 276 and 476 the volt 176 has a single mic line input the 276 has two mic line inputs and the volt 476 still only has two mic line inputs but has a further two line inputs on the back and the thing about these 7-6 ending units is, if we look at the top here, is you do get still the vintage switch to bring in that 6-10 emulation but you also get a 7-6 compressor switch and that switch is in an emulation of the famous Universal Audio 1176 compressor strapped across the input again running off DSP inside the unit. So that's those other three units but the main ones that people are going to be interested in are these two the single input volt one and the dual input volt two. Yeah. Now with either of these, you also get a big bundle of free software. So let's quickly look at that. Boom, here we go. Um, so you get all this stuff from Softube, uh, the Marshall Plexi, which is a great Marshall emulation, it really is. One of the best out there. And you also get the time and tone bundle. 
Now I use uh, a lot of these products um, all the time. The tube delay is a fantastic uh, delay unit with tube saturation. The Droma S73 is a very, very good stereo compressor. It's the sort of reduced cut down version of SoftTube's full blown Droma 1973 compressor, but it's fantastic. Now this one, the saturation knob, is a real secret weapon. I use this a lot. It applies saturation in whatever amount, driven by the main knob. You can switch it between three flavours, bright, dark or neutral. And whilst this will, if you drive it hard, give real saturation, the secret weapon aspect of this is to apply a little bit of saturation and then add it to a vocal and it just lifts the vocal out of the mix without making it any louder. It's it's incredible. It also does the same thing on acoustic guitars, drums, whatever, but really on vocals, it's it's just fantastic. And then you also get the SAR 1R reverb. This is uh, SoftTube's reduced version of the full-blown SAR reverb. And I use this all the time, even though I've got a big selection of sort of more advanced feature-rich reverbs, this thing is just fantastic because it has a separate slider. Ooh, page is wobbling. It has a different separate slider for the pre delay amount and then the reverb from small to really big. And it has the three switchable flavors bright, dark, or neutral, as well as a volume control and a wet dry mix. And I tend to use this for pre delay. And it's great. It's fantastic for that. Uh, but the reverb, if you decide to bring that in with the you know it comes after the pre-delay it's a very good little reverb as well so you get all that um, if you don't have a door you get a Ableton Live 11 Lite um, I've got to be honest I'm not a fan of Ableton at all but uh, you do get that you also get Melodyne Essential which if you don't know it it's an audio tuning plugin um, you know to tune vocals or whatever audio you get this uh, Ampeg bundle I don't know this at all but you get that you get this, the Relab LX480. Now this is an emulation of the famous Lexicon 480L, uh, which is like the daddy of the big old 80s digital reverbs. S considered by some to be the finest digital reverb ever made, even to this day, massively sought after, still used today, um, so you get that. You also get Virtual Drummer and Virtual Bassist. Oh, I don't know these two products, so I can't tell you anything about them. And you also get this, Labs from Spitfire Audio. Now, I don't know this product, but I do know Spitfire Audio's um, BBC Discover Orchestra, which is superb. Everything Spitfire does is fantastic. Um, and this little instrument will give you strings, piano, percussion, synths, guitars, and other sounds. So that should be a good one as well. So you get all that free software included including a door if you don't if you don't have one alrighty so there you go the universal audio vault I just couldn't believe it when I saw the price <laughs> I just couldn't um, I mean universal audio I've got a vast range of audio interfaces um, from large ones to small ones and they're pretty expensive but I mean finally Universal Audio have brought audio interfaces to the masses with these two products and you do have the other three products which feature that 1176 switchable emulation okay so uh, there you go um, I hope that's uh, interesting and useful to you and I'll see you for more videos soon